Then you'll have to send it to me. All right, here we are at uh, 45661 Pozo Park Drive, and uh, we're at the Lundquist resident, the present day owners, and we're blessed to have one of the former owners, the original owner, with us today. Why don't you ladies introduce yourselves? I'm Barbara Ward, and my grandfather was William L. Sears, who was the original owner of the property and developer. This is my daughter, Ann Price, from San Diego, and I get to go on the tour of memories. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, tell us about your grandfather, Barbara. Well, uh, he was from Bakersfield. He was an attorney that I think made his money in real estate development of some sort. What was his name? William L. Sears. Okay. And I think he had an office on Chester Avenue, um, Bakersfield. I don't know much more than that. But in about, he bought this in about 1913. As I remember, he and Mr. Stegeman bought the whole property. And of Pozo Park? Of Pozo Park. Well, I think my grandfather named it Pozo Park. It was just property. And Mr. Stegeman kept the ranch house and all of the grazing area for the um, cattle. And my grandfather took the property along the creek. Now, I don't know if it was on both sides of the creek or just the far side. Mm -hmm. uh, because that was the only lots that I ever saw. Mm -hmm. Well, we used to come up here um, when I was a little kid. My grandmother died in 1932. And what and was her name? Her name was Mary Sears. Okay. Um, and so my grandfather was alone, and yet he had to be up here. So my mother and my brother and I, and very often a cousin, came up in the summer from the time school was out until school began. And my dad would come up for a two-week vacation that required a lot of manual labor. <laughs> so when, well, approximately what years was this then that you were up this here? This would have been 19, I'd say 32, to when I would have been, what, four years old, five yeah. years old. Yeah. From about five till I was about 12. Um, and so then really when, till World War till I. World, till the gas ranch thing. I mean, World War II. Yeah. And then it was sold to a cousin, uh, Dorothy and Dick Bailey in Bakersfield. And he was a teacher and he helped develop the some park in Bakersfield, the one where they moved buildings and stuff into. Oh, the historical park? Right? The historical park. All right. That's all I know about that. And then, um, and they sold it then to Mary that had the bed and breakfast, as I understand it. Or you mean Jane? Jane. Jane. Jane Baxter. Jane Baxter, okay. I never met her, but I know one of my cousins did. Um, but when we came during the summers, every there wasn't much to do here, but there was a lot of work. And so every <laughs> morning we had so many piles of, of um, pine needles we had to scrape up and carry down the fire pit in which we are standing right now. <laughs> I had to, as a little kid, I had to chop kindling and I guess the boys split wood. Later I guess I did because I've always enjoyed it. And my, you, you said that you would walk down to um, Balance Rock. Yeah, that was um, some place to go. <laughs> right, right. Was Panorama Heights here then? Panorama Heights was here but not developed. Mm -hmm. And a high school acquaintance of my mother's did buy that. And one time when we were out here, we went over there. And she was there and she had a raft of little boys 
and then it kind of turned into a motorcycle park. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> I haven't been over there yet. Well, it's uh, it's pretty developed. Yes, sir. And there's some real nice homes, and then there's some that aren't so nice. Yeah. Oh. You know, it's yeah. a mountain community. Yeah. Tell about um, what you said when we were driving up here about how the farm was over and you would go over there for at night for milk or something? Right. Yeah, we walked down to the Stegeman Ranch um, to get milk because they had cows. Occasionally they would have fresh fruit or vegetables because when we came up here, we were here for the summer, no refrigeration, um, so we didn't have fresh food or fresh meat or um, I think we always had ham and bacon. And as I remember, we had a huge punch of beef that at night they put on a hook and have it way up between two pine trees. And in the daytime, bring it down, wrap it all with, I don't know, newspaper blankets, something. And I guess they cut pieces off of it. I don't remember that. <laughs> Did you ever have any uh, experiences with wild animals up here? Um... Really, a lot of snakes. <laughs> we had a lot of snakes, and I loved the pine needle beds. And there was a king snake that just loved to get in bed with me. <laughs> and my dad would take it up the creek, and, or somebody would, and it would be back in the morning. Speaking of your dad uh, and mother, what were their names? Williams, Herb and Miriam Williams. Okay. My mother was Miriam Sears. Yeah. One of the daughters of William L. And okay. And, and your brother, he came up here too? What was his name? His name was Herb Williams. Okay. And he now lives in Portland. Okay. Uh, Vancouver, Washington. And there's uh, this, uh, Helen Sears married William Starling. And they used to come up here a lot with friends. Um uh, and they really had fun here where the rest of us work. <laughs> now, do you remember going to the annual meeting in September, Labor Day weekend? No such thing. There wasn't anything like that then? No. Well, and you were probably gone by September. Yeah, we'd be gone by September yeah. anyway. Now, do you remember any of the other families up here that were your friends? I, uh, the only name that comes to me, there were some people that had a house right on the street. And they stayed here, I think, in the winter time most of the time. And I cannot say their name. Was that Dad and Mom Simons? Simons. Okay, good. Yes. And then the Keisters live three doors down here. How do you spell their name? I don't know. But they were an older couple that were just delightful. And I, I a little minute, a few minutes ago. I could think of the name of the Porter Group people that live next door, but I can't now. The, it, like I said, it could have been the Daybells. Yeah, that wasn't. That, that wasn't, wasn't them. Her name, and I think she was single. Okay. Whether never married or whether divorced, okay. I don't know. And she had a couple of daughters. Did you know the Wilsons? They're two doors down from here. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people. Uh, wouldn't come all the time, you know. Right. So That's you right. know, these people just come maybe for a weekend or overnight or to check on things. Well, this is certainly a private spot here, isn't it? Oh. I mean, you know, you're at the end of the road. Oh, it's a delightful. Yeah. I still uh, hear this babbling creek when I go to bed at night. <laughs> if I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. A good memory. Yeah. Good memory. Well, anything else you'd like to add to this little? oral history no. thank you for taking it thank you for <laughs> sending it to us in advance uh, yeah and um, I was thinking on the way up when she was sharing the memories that oh, I should have been recording this so <laughs> you've taken care of it for me yeah. appreciate that. we used to walk just for something to do in the afternoon down to Mallet's Rock because it was dirt road and the dirt was good six eight inches thick and we were in bare feet, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, and, oh, what fun to kick through that soft, hot dust. <laughs> <laughs> and you also said about um, Jack's Ranch 
Oh, yeah, Jack Ranch. Jack Ranch had the only light bulb. They had a generator, and so there was one light bulb that they put over the door. We were usually down there before dark, but if not, there was one light. I'll be darned. That was it. Oh. We had uh, free, not free on, um, those big tanks. Propane? Propane, uh -huh. propane. We had a propane stove, but we weren't allowed to use it very often. <laughs> <laughs> cost too was, much. Cost too much, and I think it was hard to get tanks up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for emergencies, it could be used. We had Coleman lights and lanterns. My job every day was to clean those glass lanterns. <laughs> well, we're certainly glad that your grandfather uh, went into partnership with the Stegemans and developed this because Pozo Park is really, in my humble opinion, the you know kind of the jewel of the Southern Sierras here, and as far as the communities go, it really is. It really is. And mm -hmm. how close? I didn't realize how close. Yeah. To Bakersfield and to Porterville and to Palano. Um, mm -hmm. Just a wonderful spot. Very convenient. Very convenient. Yeah. Well, let's see. Is there anything else I should put on this? Yeah. Uh, can, if we step away, can you get the sound of the babbling brook? Yeah, I can. Okay. Let's, let's, let's try it here. Here we are. We're looking south from the property down toward the Daybells and Wilsons and here's upstream with the deck over the creek. And here's the house. All right.